Hello, hello. This is my eight month update since my second transplant in Brussels with uh, Dr. Mwamba. So it was a touch up transplant. I mean, they call them repair transplants when you get a second one. But I mean, really lowering the hairline, obviously doing the the temples as well. It was, you know, from, from my point of view, it was just a second transplant. Obviously, you know, you've, you've watched my journey, a lot of you from the start, from my first transplant in Turkey in 2020. So yeah, it was something that I wanted to do, but I didn't really need to do, I guess. Um, so yeah, here I am at eight months, probably eight and a half months, really. And I would say that over the last couple of months, I've probably been looking at my hair a lot more. I don't know why, like I've kind of, in a way, been obsessing with it a bit. Um, and there are a few things that I'm kind of not as happy with now, actually. Um, you know, you kind of get the full result. What, in my opinion, from the first transplant, I got the full result pretty much from six months. Like they say, you know, they say that it's from 12 months, but I think I didn't really see much difference. Now, a second surgery where you might have scar tissue and things like that, it takes a bit longer to really grow in. Um, so even now, eight and a half months, uh, Dr. Mwamba, who I, I recently had a video consultation with, said that it's not the full result. But how much change am I going to see really? I'm not sure. So the things I'm unhappy with, it's predominantly on this side. So if I show you that there, I kind of think it's a little bit see-through. So there are grafts at the front and then kind of directly behind them, there's more of a gap. And then there's also this, which I think I've mentioned before. It's like an actual bald patch there. You probably can't see it as well in this bit. So I've got some pictures which I'd sent to the clinic to see what they said. Um, and essentially, Dr. Wamba has said that there's different stages of hair growth and some hairs go into the resting stage and all this stuff. And he basically said, wait till 10 months before you kind of really know if any more growth is going to occur. So these hairs here that, you know, he's adamant were placed there um, still might grow in. I mean, I guess I'm not really convinced. Um, this side's not quite as bad, I don't think. And then the other thing that I'm kind of not happy with, I mean, there's also kind of directly in the middle, a bit of a, yeah, I just think it's a little bit see-through in places. Um, and you probably can't see it as much here. And to be honest, like my girlfriend says it's not noticeable. And so the average Joe wouldn't notice it. Again, it's because I've obviously gone through the process twice. So I'm, and, and obviously I'm looking at myself so much. But yeah, that was the point of getting the second transplant to get the improvement, which of course it is by being lower, you know, making my forehead a bit smaller because I've got a, a huge forehead. Even now, it's still uh, three inches from top to, to the eyebrows, which is kind of the top end of a, 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 a normal sized forehead. I think they said two, between two and three inches is a kind of average size for, forehead. And I'm still at three inches now after having quite a considerable amount of graphs from, you know, from before the first transplant, it's now um, over 3,000 grafts at the front alone. And that's the thing, a lot of people, um, you know, have, have kind of said to me about, are you not worried that you've now used a lot of grafts? How many have you got left? So I did ask Dr. Mwamba that, and I sent in some pictures. Um, the donor, I think, obviously my hair's a bit longer right now. The donor, I do think looks good, you know, particularly at a bit longer length. I know people want shorter hair, and I'm, I'm going to go for a haircut soon, so I'll try and shoot that as well. But I'm, I, I don't think it's it's that bad at all. You know, I think actually the second transplant did improve the appearance of the donor because of the fact that he could kind of homogenize it a little bit. And then, yeah, Dr. Mama said he reckons there's probably still 2,000 grafts there. So for me, that is still, you know, a decent amount if I need it. And, and you might be thinking, well, where, where would you need it? So obviously I got, you know, new hairs implanted here. And obviously I did get some in the crown as well, you know, more in the first transplant and then a little touch up in the second transplant. But essentially what's stopping kind of the rest of your hair going bald, you know, um, and receding and stuff. But, you know, that's why I take finasteride. So over the last three years, it'll be coming up to three years now since that first transplant, I haven't seen any more recession. Yes, I do get a few hairs coming onto my hand in the shower but I think that's normal. You know, my girlfriend, that happens for her. Like sometimes it's just longer hair or whatever. So I, I don't think there is any kind of more patches that will need doing, particularly in the near future. And also, to be honest, I kind of think that there will be further improvements with, you know, with hair loss and things like that. I think 
I think that if in 10 years time, we're still taking the same medications, FUE hair transplants are done in the same way, I'd be surprised. I think there will be advancements in that. So I do think a lot of people, you know, from the comments that I read, a lot of people are scared to get a transplant, which is understandable for different reasons. The pain elements, things like that, flying to a different country, all these different things. But if you, you're too worried that you're going to need multiple transplants, I think it's, it's, not, it's not actually a big deal. Like particularly me for the second one where I didn't have to shave my head, it really did not feel like a big deal at all. So I'm looking at myself now like this. You know, I need glass, you know, I wear glasses, so my eyesight's not perfect. So from this point of view, I'm looking at thinking it looks good. When I see it up close, you know, I does it look a hundred percent natural? And the answer is no. So when Dr. Mwamba is implanted on the hairline, he doesn't actually implant what's known as micro irregularities, which are the kind of the hairs that go in different positions to just make it look natural. And I do worry that it is a bit, if you look at it like that right now, for me, that looks like you could put a ruler there and it kind of is a bit straight. I did bring this up to him when I was out there, he's designing the hairline, I kind of mentioned micro irregularities. And he basically said, he drew kind of a line, like a hairline, and then he just dotted above and, be above and below and he said, this is what he does. And I thought, well, that kind of is micro irregularities, isn't it? Because, you know, they're not all going to be in a straight line. But I think when I look at it sometimes, like I said, if you put a ruler there now, I think it would, you know, like that. Yeah, I, th I think it is a little bit too, a bit too kind of straight. So I do think right now that I do possibly need an extra little touch up of, say, between two and 400 grafts to implant behind this hairline, but also maybe add a couple at the hairline. And I think what I would do is, because I mentioned that, you know, I asked for an extra few grafts at the front to create a tiny little widow's peak. I think an extra few there would be beneficial as well. I mean, I'm, obviously I'm at a point where I've had two transplants, a third, you know, very small touch up would not be a big deal at all. See there now, you can kind of see through there. I mean, most of the time there's hair covering, but yeah, I think there is like a little bald patch I don't know why that's there. I don't know where that's come from, whether that's been, you know, the shock loss from the those kind of miniaturized hairs that have just died. But I do think a little bit there, I think what, you, what you'd have to do is you'd have to shave the front kind of hairline so that you could then do it. But I wouldn't have to shave my whole head or whatever. But yeah, I do think from looking at it like this, I could benefit from an extra couple hundred grafts and obviously, you know, going back to like Dr. Kuto in Spain, you know, people ask me all the time why I didn't decide on Dr. Kuto. And a couple of reasons, really. The price, like I got a much better price with Dr. Mwamba. But also I'd been for like three consultations and, and Dr. Kuto was the one who'd um, drawn a, a, a much lower hairline. I mean, don't forget the first hairline he drew was going to be for 2,000 grafts. Then the second one was for, I believe, 1,600 so in my head at the time, I was thinking, I don't really want that many graphs, you know, just in case. Because again, you have got to be aware of how many graphs you've got in, in your head. You know, the average head can get between six and 8,000 graphs, I believe, from what I've seen. So you've got to be realistic with how many graphs you need to so always check that Norwood scale. But yeah, the second reason that I didn't go with Dr. Kuto, and I've not actually said this before, because I don't really have the proof other than it was what I saw at the time. But during the consultation, when he was like on the computer and stuff, I looked at his hand and his hand was shaking a little bit. Like, you know, I'm, I'm being serious. Like, you know, some people get nervous, but I mean, you wouldn't be nervous meeting me. Like, that's weird. Like, yeah, it, it just kind of literally put a bad idea in my head a little bit, which, you know, I surely it was a one-off, but I, it kind of just, that feeling that in that room, you know, at, you know, if you go back to that video with, with the consultation, I mentioned that he, he talked about David Silver for a lot of the time. I felt that the other two consultations that I'd had were a lot more thorough. And, and that was kind of the, the big, the big thing really. But yeah, obviously we've seen great results from him. Of course, he's regarded as being in the top two or three in the world, you know, so if not the best. So maybe I would have got better results. You know, a lot of people do ask who are the best surgeons in the world. You know, there's kind of a list really of like 10, 15 that realistically you wouldn't go wrong with. You know, how much different is it going to be really? Um, but yeah, obviously now you, you might be turning around and be like, oh, well, you clearly made the wrong decision if, you, if you're going to need an extra touch up. I mean, that's the thing. I'm going to speak to the clinic again in, in a couple of months because they, they said, 
you know, Dr. Walmer said to me that they might still grow in. If they don't grow in, from my point of view, they should be then giving me those grafts for free because, you know, that's what I feel. I mean, if, I, if, if, if they turn around and say, okay, we're going to estimate 400 grafts, it's going to be this amount, I'd be like, well, why would I choose to go to them again? You know, at this point, I'd probably go to a different clinic and not necessarily bad blood, you know, from what I have seen, the majority of it is very good work, but it's not that perfection that I was kind of expecting or hoping for, which again, you know, it doesn't exist, but you know, was I hoping for slightly better results than what I've got? Yes. And what I would also say is, and you probably can't see here at all, there are a couple of double grafts, not directly on the hairline, but slightly behind, where because of the fact that it's a bit see-through, it's noticeable. Now, I've had a look at the pictures from before my surgery and after, and a couple of these double grafts that I've seen, which you can't really see, but there's one around here somewhere, and there's one around here somewhere. They, they're definitely from that second surgery. So for whatever reason, at that top clinic where they do have microscopes to separate grafts and stuff, I have still got a couple of double grafts, which for me are noticeable. Again, the average Joe would not notice them at all. You know, that's the other thing, isn't it? We're in kind of a community here with people, the hair transplant community, people receding, people needing transplants, looking at their options. We obviously have studied this stuff. We, we know a little bit about it. The average Joe doesn't know anything. So, you know, I kind of, I mean, I've had a shower this morning. I'm still very lazy. I don't style it with products or anything. Just just towel dry it and with my fingers. So I do have the, trans, the, the actual hairline on show. You know, it's not like I'm actually bringing it forward to try and cover it. It is kind of on show. I am, I am pretty much still going in one direction, but that's because it kind of goes that way anyway. Um, so yeah, I've ranted on a little bit here. I'm at eight months, eight and a half months. Right now, I'm hoping it's not the end result, because if it is, I feel like I would probably need an extra couple of hundred grafts, between two and 400 at least, I think. I mean, 200 grafts, I don't know if you can even do much with that at all. So it might actually be four to 500 or something like that. So obviously then I've got to go through another procedure, more cost involved possibly. So that is a bit annoying. Do I regret getting the second transplant? No, because I do think that even right now looking at it like this, it's still better than what it was. So again, I think I've improved the situation, but I am in that, you know, pretty grim s situation of where I'm kind of looking for improvements possibly too much. I'm not sure. Um, you let me know what you think and any questions, let me know and I'll give you another update at 10 months.